Good morning, church. Uh, welcome to our new online church experience. Things are going to look a little bit different these days, and we understand that, and uh, I know you understand that. So we're still committed to being a community, to still being a church that spreads the gospel, that still spreads the hope of Jesus Christ uh, in our own circumstances, in our community, and in our world. But we need to do that in new and unique ways. So in the weeks and maybe even months moving forward, uh, we're going to continue church online. The Sunday experience will look a little bit differently. Sometimes uh, we'll incorporate an element of worship. Um, children's ministry is going to start next week right here online. Um, and so we'll have materials for families to go through, parents to go through with their children. That's going to be at 9, around 9.45. We'll post that out online. And we encourage everybody to stay connected in this time. So we'll have midweek community connections that we're coming up with as well. And we encourage everybody to jump on the phone, jump on FaceTime, get on video chat and connect over this time. Also, join us on Instagram and on Facebook. A lot of information will be coming out there. And it'll also give us a platform to engage with, with you and to show what different families are going through in this time in, in isolation. So we've been watching the news very, very closely as a leadership, uh, watching the updates, and clearly our world's changing. It's changing minute by minute uh, almost in a lot of cases. And I didn't know where this week and what this Sunday would look like. I didn't know uh, what type of message specifically that uh, God wanted us to share. And so I've come together with our preaching team, with our staff team, with our leadership team. And I believe that um, God wants us to, to obviously get into his word, to dive into scripture. But we're going to take a little break from our Ephesians series and we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 19 today. So if you flip there in your Bibles in 1 Kings chapter 19, and it's an Old Testament story in a world now where we're experiencing a lot of change. A lot of change in our lives, a lot of change in our, circum our circumstances and situations. Uh, but God remains the same. He's the same yesterday, He's the same today, and He'll be the same tomorrow. Uh, the church has gone through a lot of adversity and persecution and famine and plagues before, but we're going to adapt and overcome and keep things moving forward because God hasn't changed and he's in control and Jesus is the head of the church and we're the church and because he's the same our mission our purpose our, our position in the kingdom hasn't changed none of that has changed and our unity with believers hasn't changed if God is the same yesterday when we trusted him when we put our hope in him when we first believed in him when we said I'm going to throw off everything that entangles and follow after you He's the same today, so we can keep trusting Him, and He's the same tomorrow, so we can keep putting our hope and our trust in Him, knowing that the promises He's made will come to pass. And so I want to turn your attention to 1 Kings chapter, chapter 19. It's a story of how God moves and works in the midst of fear and isolation. And I, I know things are, uh, can be a little bit scary this day, these days. You know, people uh, may have lost jobs. Mortgages that were already tight are becoming now a major financial fear for people. Our parents, many of our parents are now in the, uh, the vulnerable population uh, for what's going on with, with COVID-19. And, and I believe, you know, as a society and as a church, we're in uncharted territories. Um, but the beauty of the gospel and the, the beauty of knowing Jesus is you know the architect of the territories. So we don't need the charts because we've got the guide. And so 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, I'll, I'll set the scene real quick. So it's a person named Elijah. Elijah is a prophet of God. And he's on the run. The rulers wanted him dead. The people wanted him dead at the time. He's, he's on the run and he's isolated and he's alone and he's terrified. Right? He's, he's terrified. He's trying to avoid being killed. And Israel 
at the time is full of this thing called apostasy. It's an apostate place, right? They've abandoned their religious belief. They've abandoned their doctrine of God. And, and, and this is something we need to watch for, right? We don't want to become an apostate church today in our circumstances and situations, right? We want to continue to preach the gospel. We want to continue to deal with sin in our lives and, and preach the, the holiness and the full counsel of God with fear and with reverence, right? Um, we don't want to put our confidence in all these things and all these different materials that we have that are so temporary, but we want to put our confidence in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And so Elijah is isolated, alone, and he's practicing absolute social distancing in a cave by himself. And so we'll pick the story up in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9, I'm reading from the New International Version, the NIV. There he went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars, and they put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is about to pass you by. Then a great powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake, and the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, and the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Wherever you are right now, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or LBC or Latin Baptist Live or later in the day or in the week, um, just before we get into this, let's uh, jump into a, a moment of prayer and ask for God to reveal something uh, about himself and how he's going to be our support and our guide and our comfort in a season of isolation and fear. Let's pray. God, thanks so much for this morning that we can come together uh, either on Facebook or LBC's website or uh, YouTube or whatever our channels are, God. Um, but we're in the Word of God and we're connecting virtually, not physically, but spiritually and unified around the Word of God. Um, I ask that you would, you would reveal something in, in my heart, in my mind, in all of our minds, in all of our hearts about the nature of who you are, that we can find complete rest and comfort in the truth of, of, of the fact that you've never changed, that you're the same Yesterday, you're the same today, and you're the same tomorrow. I ask all these things in your name. Amen. Uh, I, I didn't know, again, what, what we'd be doing today. If I knew we couldn't meet physically, uh, and we've been as a staff team and as a leadership team trying to figure out exactly what does Sunday now look like? What does our Sunday meetings look like? Uh, there's a whole spectrum of reactions going on in the world with what's happening, right? And so we need to adapt with all the new information um, as, as it comes out. And what does God want to say to us today through uh, the preaching of his word? I've been watching the news closely. I, I, I saw some people, you know, people are just reacting to, to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic in completely different ways. Um, I saw some people on spring break in Miami, right? And they're saying, ah, oh, we don't care if we get the virus. We don't care if we die, we die. You know, I planned this trip two months ago and, and I'm not leaving. This is what I'm doing. This is my life. And, and then there's, there's other uh, people, I think these are a lot more rational people, uh, that realize the seriousness of what's happening in our world, of what's going on today in our world, right? The reality is this, schools are closed, parks are closed, pools are closed, libraries, restaurants, all closed, the borders closed. We've never uh, really seen that in our lifetime at all. You know, it, for me where this really uh, became real is when Starbucks closed and, and I, I can't find coffee. I don't even own a coffee machine. And so this is serious in our world that things are changing. And so we wanna look at what is the church's response? What is the response now of the believer following after Jesus, trying to become uh, more and more like Jesus, making disciples, sharing the hope 
in a world with a real and present danger. In 1 Kings 19, a uh, lot of different circumstances, the situation uh, was different, but it caused him to feel scared and isolated and alone. There was a real and present danger in Elijah's life. And, and his perspective caused him deep emotional turmoil. And, and I believe that some of these things that we're seeing are causing some of us some deep emotional turmoil. Uh, at some point this week, I'm sure many of us were impacted personally by what's going on in the world today, whether it's a person who we know affected by uh, this virus that's happening in the world. This is a real and present danger, uh, but we still want to be a church that, uh, that rises up and supports one another and continues moving forward while supporting those who are scared or that are experiencing sorrow in this season. And so for the next few moments in our time this morning, I want to look at what we can do spiritually, what we can do practically, and what we can do relationally in a world of fear and seclusion. So Elijah, he's on the run, 40 days, 40 nights, and he finds himself alone and scared in a cave. Right? And in verse 9 it says this, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he responds, Listen, God, I've been very zealous for you. The Israelites... Uh, they, they don't care about your covenant. They've rejected that. They've torn down the altars. They've put prophets to death with the sword. Uh, these are my friends. These are my colleagues. These are the people who I'm close with that are now suffering or they've been torn away from me and, and I'm isolated. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. There's this thing that's trying to kill me. I've been faithful. I've been following after you. I've been living for you and now I've got no friends. Uh, I've got no community. I've got no income. I've got no home and I've got no supplies. I, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's interesting to me when I read first. Uh, Kings chapter 19, Elijah's alone with nothing. He's by himself. And this is when he meets with God. You know, in Moses in Exodus chapter 34, or sorry, Exodus chapter 24, he meets with God when he's alone. Abraham, Genesis 22, he's alone and he meets with God. There's something to be said about the isolation. God is showing us something here. See, Elijah's scared because the people want him dead. There's this thing out there that could kill him. And in verse 11 it says this, The Lord said, Go out, stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is about to pass you by. Uh, meaning, I'm going to meet with you and I'm going to show you something about my presence in the midst of your circumstances. And it says this, Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart, shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. The Bible uses these sorts of things uh, to show us something. It, 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 it tells us that God is about to show up. It says a powerful wind. God thought in the, wasn't in those things, right? A powerful earthquake. God wasn't in the earthquake. A, a, a huge fire. God wasn't in the fire. And it seems like there's problem after problem after problem after problem. And, and I can imagine Elijah being so scared, feeling alone. And, and he's got this windstorm and this earthquake and this fire happening. And he, he's like, okay, God, you told me to come out from the from my cave. You've told me that you're about to pass me by. You've showed me these things, right? It, it, it almost seems like, like there's just chaos going all around, right? Schools closed and parks closed and, and stores closed. And we're no different than Elijah. Like a lot of times we look at the Old Testament and we don't think that this really necessarily applies to me. I'm going to stay in the New Testament because the Old Testament isn't what I'm going through. These are different times. But God's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same tomorrow. And if you jump to the New Testament, in James chapter 5 verse 17 it says Elijah was a man just like us 
meaning that his fear and his stress and his loneliness and his isolation and, and his observations of the world around the circumstances might be different, but the reaction and the human response and condition is the same. Elijah was a man just like us. And look what God does in verse 12. When Elijah was finally still, when he was finally quiet, when he was finally in a place where he could listen, came a gentle whisper. This tells me that God has never been far away, but that he's with you every step of the way. So how do we hear now the gentle whisper and experience God in this season of life, in this season of confusion, in this season of frustration, in this season of fear, in this season of uncertainty? How do we experience the presence of God and hear the voice of God in our isolation? In our fear. Uh, uh, I believe that this is also a season where we can increase in our knowledge and relationship with God. Now that we're isolated and quiet, a quiet whisper. Wherever you are, on a couch somewhere, watching this, maybe on a, on a TV, laying in bed, and you're on your phone, God is with you. He's right beside you. He's not abandoned you. We've been so distracted in our society, though. I, I, I'm the type of person where I get really busy, and I, I get busy on my phone. I get busy emailing. I get busy with meetings. I get busy with connecting with people. I get really busy with my calendar. I've been so distracted, so busy, so uh, uh, uncertain about what's going on in the world, watching the news, watching uh, all these updates and, and government updates, which are important to watch. But oftentimes I'm so unfocused that I don't even notice the presence of God. So how do we experience God here and now? Spiritually, practically, and relationally. In, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says this, All scripture is breathed out by God. The gentle whisper of God today in our life is through scripture. It's from the Bible. God's voice in order to hear it, in order to be prompted by the Holy Spirit to the Word of God in our situations and circumstances when we're feeling isolated and alone, is to know, is to know the Word of God and to know God more intimately and closely and, and be connected with Him relationally on a spiritual level. We've got to get in the Word of God. And Jesus says this in John chapter 17, This is eternal life, that they would know you. And we get to know God more and more when, when all the busyness and, and all the situations and all the fear causes us to this quiet place and we hear this gentle whisper to know the only true God, Jesus Christ, the one whom you have sent. It's this spiritual discipline called silence and solitude. Silence and solitude and Bible reading. Uh, I've been watching a lot of videos right now in this season of, of different spiritual leaders telling us what they think we should do, what's going on. Some have claimed to be prophetic teachers, right? They're looking at end time things. Some of them say, oh, this is when the end, time, the end is near and everything like that. And uh, others are, are saying, and I think this is much more concerning uh, during this pandemic, they're saying this is the season of fire, right? Or, or they're saying this is going to be the best year to come. Or some are saying you need to sow a, a seed of faith. Uh, into our ministry and God will show up in your life, meaning give us money and God will respond in your, in your life. These, these statements are not the voice of God. This isn't the voice of God. That isn't the gentle 
whisper. This isn't what we need to be listening to. If Elijah was so busy on YouTube seeking out all these different spiritual leaders, all these different potential people speaking into his, into his life and saying, if you just send us some money, Elijah, you'll, you'll experience the voice of God, and you'll feel the presence of God. But scripture is very clear. All scripture is breathed out by God. Therefore, if you want to hear the voice of God, the, the whisper of God, the gentle uh, um, word of God, it's found in the scripture. If you want to hear from God during this time, you must be in the word. Right? 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says this. It says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So if we want to grow uh, spiritually, we're in our Bible and we're in prayer, right? Elijah, in his situation and in his circumstance, what did he do? He talked with God, right? He, all of his fears, all of his anxieties, all of his doubts, all of his worries, all of his complaints, he takes them to God. And although the circumstance of his situation may not have changed, Eliza, Elijah's perspective changed. His perspective was made clear to the will of God. Prayer is designed to align our will with God's will. If we truly believe that God is in control, that He is sovereign, that he's given us a purpose and a mission and a mandate and a calling to be a church in these present uh, circumstances and situations, we need to be a praying church. We need to be defined by uh, our prayer life, by praying without ceasing, by being in our families and, and in our uh, real small groups or virtually over video calls, praying together, praying in new ways together, praying as individuals. We need to be a praying church. Elijah did it. Elijah heard the word of God. We hear the word of God through scripture. Elijah heard the gentle whisper of God in his fear and in his isolation, and he wasn't afraid to talk to God. I believe we need to be praying without ceasing. Like, God, show me what to do in these times. God, give me a peace that surpasses understanding. God, God, tell me, who should I phone? Who Put, put somebody on my heart. Put somebody on my mind that I need to pick up the phone and, and give them some encouragement. Um, hear my worries. Hear what I'm worried about, God, and, and give me a person that can uh, supply some of my needs. Maybe people in our church are without um, all the groceries they need, or they, maybe they need really practical things, or they, maybe they need somebody to, to connect with them and, and to show up in their life, um, even though there's social distancing, there's ways for us to connect. Um, God, give us the answer to what we need to do. So Elijah is alone in a cave and he talks with God. You know, we're isolated at home and it's time to talk to God. God speaks through scripture. We speak through prayer and our will gets aligned with his will and our perspective changes. And, and I also believe that this is not a season of spiritual unemployment, right? Uh, uh, Elijah's all alone. He's the only one left in his mind. And, and his perspective was stuck in an isolated cave. Um, uh, I believe that this is a season where we can exercise our spiritual muscles, right? I, I believe that we can start exercising our spiritual muscles. Um, when I have nothing to do, I, I like to go to the gym. I like to, I like to go to the gym, and that became a rhythm and a routine in my life. The gym's closed now, so I can't do that. So I have no routine and no rhythm about exercise, and so I'm just kind of um, not doing anything right now physically. But, but I get into a routine, into a rhythm, and um, this is an opportunity for us to get into a spiritual rhythm and routine. You know, when you have a worrying thought or a concerning thought or something that's stressing you out, do you take it to God, right? Uh, do you turn to Scripture, to the truth of Scripture? You know, Elijah took his, his fears, anxieties, and complaints to God, right? His worries to God. That's what he did. And God responded with a word. So do we turn to God with our worries? Do we turn to Scripture with with look, seeking an answer to our fear and anxiety? You know, do we enter into worship in this time? Do we enter into 
worship? Do we continue to serve one another? These are all things we can do spiritually and get into a rhythm of so that when this pandemic is over and the situation ends, we've got spiritual muscles and a spiritual rhythm so that we're prepared for the next battle and then the next battle and we're able to fight sin and we're able to unify with other believers because now we're in a rhythm and a practice of checking in, of connecting in new and unique ways wherever we are. So practically and relationally, we still need to connect. Verse 15 a first Kings chapter 19 says, God's going to give you a close friend, Elijah. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you somebody. I'm going to give you an attendant. I'm going to connect you with somebody. Oh, and by the way, Elijah, there's 7,000 more people. Maybe it's not our circumstances that are the big problem, our fear and our isolation but our perspective of the situation. You know, oftentimes uh, I've taken church for granted my entire life. Uh, I've taken it for granted my entire life. Uh, you know, we show up, we get together, we say hi, we have coffee, we worship, we listen to a word, and then we all go home. Right? I was driving the other day and I was listening to some worship music and uh, it's a song called King of Kings. And uh, I was listening to it and there's a line in the song and, and it says, um, the church of Christ was formed and the spirit lit the flame. And, and, and as, I was, as I was singing it and as I was driving, um, I thought to myself, what really kills me about this right now is that we can't sing this together. Uh, I hate that we can't be together right now. Um, and that just kills me. But that won't kill the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I might be isolated and alone and we, we can't go meet people for coffee and we can't go out for dinner with people, uh, but you can pick up your phone and you can say, hey, how, how are you doing? You know, it, it's good to hear from you. God's been showing me some things about who he is and the truth of who he is through scripture. Um, and I believe that he's got a purpose and a plan. Um, Hey, let's talk later. Let's keep connecting. Let's let's listen to one another, one another's lives. Or, or jump on a video call. And, and community groups shouldn't be stopping. Keep community groups going. Jump on a, a video call or or Skype or FaceTime. Keep connecting. Although we can't meet physically, we can meet virtually. Don't s let the social distance stop spiritual connections with one another. And if the Spirit of God lit the flame of the church, if Jesus is the head of the church, our perspective and our approach merely needs to change. Elijah got Elisha. Elijah got Elisha. Two different people, but Elijah was given a person in his life to connect with. Uh, uh, Ashley, you might get uh, uh, Melissa, you know, uh, Dennis, you might get Sean, Tim, you might get Brando, any, any, anybody in the church, maybe it's somebody new that God's going to put on your heart and use through a phone call, right? Many of us uh, in this season, uh, I've seen it all around, want to self-preserve as well, you know, it's not a season to hoard, right? Uh, God said, or God pointed out to Elijah and in 1 Kings, hey, there's 7,000 other people. You're not alone. You don't need to hoard up your own things. Now's the time to, to, to reach out. Now's the time as a church where we want to fulfill the practical needs of one another, to share our supplies with each other, to, to check in with people who needs groceries, who needs uh, any sort of thing practically. This is the time that the church needs to unify and to share with one another. And, and Elijah needed someone, right? He needed the relationship. He needed the practical supplies, but he also needed the relationship. And God provided. Um, we're not alone in this. We're, we're, we're in this together. It's interesting to me because uh, the name Elijah means the Lord is my God. Uh, Elijah means 
The Lord is God. Jehovah is God. But when his situation changed and his perspective changed, he needed a reminder of who God is. And along comes Elisha, which means God saves. I think, we need to, I think we need to be reminded that no matter what's going on, the Lord is God and our God saves. Jesus says in John chapter 16, I, I'm going to turn your sorrow into joy. Right? He says, I'm going to turn your sorrow, all your sorrow, all your pain, all your fears, all your anxieties, all your stress, I'm going to turn that into joy. Right? He's given us people. He's given us a church. He's given us connection, ability in this, in this modern era of how we can keep um, the relationships going, but he's going to take our sorrow. This gives us so much hope. He's going to give, take our sorrow and turn it to joy. How? How? How does this happen in this season and in this situation? Jump all the way to the back of the Bible. Jump all the way to the back. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. This is the hope. So Jesus says, I'm going to turn your sorrow into joy. I'm going to give you the church. I'm going to give you people relationally. And now I'm going to take your sorrow and your fear and turn it into joy. Um, ultimately through the death on the cross and the resurrection and the ascension into heaven. But Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 gives us a hope. Gives us a hope and a perspective shift. Jesus says in Revelation, I am coming soon. I am returning soon. And I'm going to take all my people, all my followers, all the believers who have been saved, redeemed, reconciled, and forgiven. I'm going to bring them into heaven. So in this season of fear and anxiety and isolation, as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to remember two things. Our Lord is God and our God saves. This is the good news in a world of chaos, in our anxieties, in our insecurities. Our God saves. He still wins. This is our confidence and this is what casts out that fear. No one knows the day or the hour uh, when Jesus re will return, Matthew 24 says that. Matthew 24, Jesus says, No one knoweth the day or the hour. Uh, only the Father knows. No one knows when Jesus is returning. But Jesus says two things about this. Watch for the signs and be ready. Elijah got an earthquake, a fire, a storm. Watch for the signs and be ready. We need to be a church Today, even in our isolation, even in moments of loneliness individually, we need to be a church today collectively, unified, so that we're ready for Jesus' return at a moment's notice. So don't lose your perspective, don't lose your hope, and be the church in new in unique ways to one another. Uh, right after this message, um, we're going to join all the churches of South Delta. Individually, everybody's going by themselves. Um, all the churches of South Delta in a prayer walk. So I encourage you to, to go on a prayer walk as a family or as individuals um, on your streets or in our community, praying for everybody's health, praying for safety, praying for... for uh, God to protect us and to awaken us spiritually, to serve one another practically, to connect in you unique ways relationally. And this will help us strive forward as a church, as believers, as we continue to share the hope that is within us, the, the, the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that our God saves. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, we look forward to the, 
to the weeks to come as we continue to do church online. We'll have a worship experience happening in the weeks to come. Uh, I hope that we can get together sooner than later uh, physically, but I also believe that we can continue to connect. So let's connect in unique ways, uh, and we'll see you next week.